Hey guys, my name is Scott Dugan, and in this video series, let's take a look at Akai's MPC Renaissance, specifically the 1.7 update. Now this update is major. We've got a lot of additions, enhancements, and changes. And I've tried to group all these little enhancements and updates into four main categories. The mixer section, software workflow, hardware workflow, and automation. Now all of these changes or updates don't fit into these four categories, so we will go off on a little rabbit trail once in a while. But either way, I think you're really going to like this update. First, let's just talk about upgrading to 1.7. All of your projects before 1.7 will work in 1.7, but once you upgrade that project to the new file format, you can't go back. This is somewhat of the norm, but I just want to make sure you guys know that. All right, now let's take a look at some background updates. The MPC software now supports AAX, so you can open it up as a plugin inside of Pro Tools 10 and Pro Tools 11. Next up, we have multiprocessor support. If we go to Preferences within the software, and go to Options, and go to Other, we can now tell the software how many process threads we want to allocate to it. In this case, I have eight. We can drop that down as far as we want. There's also a brand new plugin scanner. Now before, if you didn't have your iLock plugged in, or the scanner didn't work properly on a certain plugin, it would make the whole scan hose. Now we have crash protection, and we can even drop VSTs directly into the project info window, and they'll be ready for us. Now currently, I'm using the MPC software in standalone mode. Some of you guys might like using it as a plugin within a DAW. If you do like using it that way, we have more virtual outputs available to you. And if you open up a session and there's a missing audio device or something like that, it's okay. It's not going to crash. Stability as a plugin within a DAW has greatly increased. All right, so let's move over to the browser. We have better overall performance. And if we drill down to samples here, we can actually click on a sample again and hear it again. If we have a longer sample, we can go back into Preferences and specify how much of that sample we want to hear. Let's go to Other. And currently, I have it set to Unlimited, and that means that sample will play to the very end. But we could make it, say, five or six, and only hear the first part of that sample. We also have a brand new expansion browser. If I click this X here at the bottom left, we can see all the currently installed expansion packs. So right now I have Hybrid 3 installed and the 809. Now let's go back to Hybrid 3. Hybrid 3 is now fully integrated into the MPC software. This is really cool. So let's change this track to a plugin. And let's instantiate Hybrid 3. And now we can take a look at the user interface for Hybrid 3. If we go to Help, we can even take a look at the manual for Hybrid. Now any preset that you saved maybe in Pro Tools or you imported is also going to cross over into MPC as well. Let's move over to the hardware and take a look at how we can load those presets and tweak those presets without having to touch our computer. Here we have the plugin selected, it's hybrid. Let's hit the window button and now we can see the presets. We can scroll through those and a new workflow is hold shift and now if we hit plus and minus we can go up and down by 10. And that works in presets, effects, you name it. We have the first one selected. And let's just record our first idea. Something like that. A little bit of latency when I'm recording, so it's not going to be perfect, but you get the idea. And now the cool thing is, we can turn on auto select hit play, and now we can scroll through presets and hear what they sound like in context to our performance. Once we have a preset we like, we can go into program edit, and now we have a ton of options available to us. The parameters of Hybrid 3 have been fully integrated into the hardware, and into the software. Let's see what it sounds like when we mess around with the filters for this preset.
And now if we hold shift and use a Q-Link, we have even greater control over that parameter. Really fine tune and dial in exactly what we want. If we head back over to the software, we can see how those parameters have automatically been mapped and assigned for us. We can tweak them with the mouse, just like any other plugin. We can also pull up a keyboard. Let's go to Tools and then Show MIDI Keyboard. We can see the keyboard at the bottom here. We can even play it with our mouse. We can also use our computer's typing keyboard to play as well. Let's go back to Tools, MIDI Keys. Now you can see AWSED here, and we can kind of type to play, if you will. Using the brackets that's right next to P, we can change the octave as well. Another nice feature is that the piano roll in the grid editor shows us what notes are currently playing. So if I hit play again, we can see what notes are being triggered. Now that we have Hybrid 3 loaded on this track, we can actually view the patches within that new expansion browser. If I want to, I can hit play and start auditioning patches here as well. Let's go back to the hardware for a second. We'll go to main and we'll create a new track. Let's change this to a drum track here. And now let's hit browser and start auditioning some of our samples within the browser. With auto turned on, of course, we can hear the sample as we scroll through them. And now if we want to, from that browser window, we can hit F4 and change the volume of those previewed samples. Going back over to the software again, we have that volume available to us down here under auto. Next, let's go over just a couple random updates. The program list and menus are no longer separated by program type. So here we have all of our programs grouped together. Next, our 16 level settings are now saved and restored whenever we move around our projects. If we load up, say, an unused sequence, number two in this case, and we were to load a sequence file, it's no longer going to prompt and ask which sequence we want to load it into. It'll just automatically load it into that second unused sequence we have selected. One less window, one less click we have to do. And finally, let's head back over to the hardware. If I hit main and hit play in this sequence, we can see the progress bar ticking along at the top. Let's go back over to our first sequence. And here we can hear it and see it as it progresses along. And that's it as far as an introduction and background updates or changes to the 1.7 software upgrade. Stick around. In the next video, let's take a look at the mixer changes in 1.7. I'll see you then.